Welcome to the Relationship Revivalist Podcast. My name is John, and today we are here with none other than my wife and co-host, Jess. Hey, John. What an introduction. Well, thank you. (laughs) I have been working on these things in my head, and I have to get them out somewhere. So, you know, I've got to give you props. You are amazing, and, you know, that's why I married you. Oh, you're amazing, too. Thanks. (laughs) So today, what are we going to talk about? Well, we are going to talk about, uh, is starting over really worth it? Starting over really worth it. So what exactly are we, what path are we going down on this one? You know, that's, I had questions in my mind when we talked, when we started to talk about this top, very topic. Um, I was, you know, one of my questions was, well, um, is it okay for someone who might be in a toxic relationship to just stick it out because, they don't want to have to start over, mm-hmm. right? Even though it might be really detrimental to them. But we decided that's not the direction we're going with this one. This that's is, not what we're talking this about. This is not. This you is, know, just like if there's like any kind of abuse in a relationship, um, that should be a no-brainer. Get out of that one. Make sure you're safe. If you have kids involved, make sure they're safe. You have to make sure that, that you're safe. Um, yeah, and if you know, once you're in a safe position... I would say you could crack the door on the relationship, but I wouldn't leave it wide open, if you know what I mean. You have to be really, really careful with that, though. But that's not even what we're talking about. When we're asking, is starting over really worth it? We're talking about a relationship that, you know, maybe has gotten kind of dull over the years or Mm -hmm. over the time. um, And you're not really sure if if you really have that spark anymore. Um, you know, things like that. It's, it's not like the extremes uh-huh. <laughs> that we're talking about. It, we're talking about kind of the middle of the road where so many people find themselves um, in a marriage, yeah. in, in a relationship. Um, and, and they wonder, you know, did I make the right decision? This person seems to be different than when I first married them. Um, you know, things like that. And so that's what really what we want to talk about. Is starting over really worth it? Um, is it worth giving up all the the time and attention that you put in, especially at the beginning and then the the years, maybe if you have years put into your relationship, is it worth it just to, to pack up and, and pack up and leave and go camping? I mean, (laughs) you, you've got to, you've got choices that you have to make. And, you know, (laughs) you know, the biggest thing that people tend to do when you get to, you know, your mid to late thirties and beyond you start thinking, wow, well, it's not playtime anymore. And I've spent all of my last 15 or so years trying to find the one. And the next thing you know, that one has changed to something that you like don't even know who that person is anymore because of one reason or another. You know, maybe they've just immersed themselves in their career. Maybe they're, they're just uh, not ready to settle down and after giving the I do's or, you know, maybe you're just in the relationship that just is like, it's been fun, but you know, I want something more now. So, you know, when you get to a point where you are like ready for the absolute, let's settle down, let's, let's have a relationship that means something. Let's have a relationship that is, uh, based on team. That's based on growing together. You have to just start saying, all right, Is the person I'm with now, do they have qualities that you like and make notes of those things? And then do they have qualities that you absolutely despise? Yeah. If you think of it like as a balance scale. Yeah. As you're so you're thinking about what qualities do I really like in my relationship, in the in my significant other? And then like John said, what qualities do I despise or dislike? And how does it balance? How does it weigh? Mm-hmm. Is it heavier on the likes or is it heavier on the despise or the dislikes? And if, if it's and how much of that despise is it really is it just kind of a hanging in the balance like heavier on the despise side or is it just like there's nothing on the like side mm-hmm. and the next thing you know you're like okay so there's a whole lot more that I despise about this person than I like so is it worth salvaging your relationship Mm-hmm. And moving on. And then when you're thinking about the dislikes or the despise side, um, you also need to take a second and third look at those because sometimes 
things that we think are the truth. We dig a little deeper mm. and we find out maybe they're not. Yeah. So it's so easy for us to make snap de- judgments and decisions about other people and or about um, something that they did or said. And they may have done or said something in a way that you think, oh, my goodness, they are like they um, just, you know, wh- how, how could they do that to me? How, how could they possibly say that or do that to me? And haven't you going to get an attitude about it? But when you actually talk to the person, they might not have even known that they did or said that. And, and they didn't mean it at you or about you at all. And it might have just been a miscommunication. Happens a lot. It does. It's possible. And so it's important, even when you're looking at the things that you dislike, go back and think, is this really true? And and have I talked to my significant other about that issue? If you've never even talked about it, that'd be a good first step. Open that door of communication because you might find that they, maybe they didn't know you didn't like that. Maybe mm-hmm. they didn't know it hurt you inside. Yeah, and that kind of goes along with the the thought that I was having about this. You know, if there's if your dislikes and your likes are kind of just hanging in the balance there, can you go back and look at some of these dislikes, um, the things that you despise, and think, well, can any of these things be changed, mm-hmm. and are they willing to change, so that your likes are in favor versus the, d- the despisement things mm-hmm. are in favor. So you got to learn how to, to change the balances there so that you have more there to love and less to not love. Because, you know, it's been said over and over and over again that the things that you focus on the most are the things that you are going to get out of life. So think about this. You've got uh, a man and a woman out just enjoying themselves and telling jokes and enjoying each other's company. And, you know, one thing leads to another. And that's another little t- tip there, a little flag there. One thing leads to another. Well, what you're focusing on there is the one thing that leads to another. You're going to have more fun. You're going to have a, an am- amazing time that night mm-hmm. or that afternoon, whatever you're meeting with your with your spouse or your the person you're having a relationship with. So you have to focus on the things that you want. Yeah, exactly. And so if you decide that it's worth it to go on uh, with your with the relationship that you're that you're in, it's important to start to work on your mindset. And because you know, if if you were to end the your current relationship and then start a new relationship with someone else, if you bring the same mindset and the same way of thinking into that new relationship, guess what? You're back at square one. You're gonna, yeah, exactly. You're gonna get the same kind of relationship again. The same and issues will pop. So essentially, will arise. you're throwing those years of relationship down the toilet mm-hmm. and putting you back at square peg one. And right, just to get into the same thing again. Yeah, you're you're doing the same thing again with a different person. And how fair is that to you? And how fair is that to the person you're starting over with? Exactly. And the cool thing about um, our mindset and and what John was talking about about what's changeable. One easy question to what's changeable is us ourselves, and we've yes. talked about that a lot before. But really, when it's a relationship between you and your significant other, can you change your significant other? Mm, (laughs) No. Not not at all. (laughs) You know, that doesn't work. It only leads to nagging and and discontent and resentment. Mm -hmm. Um, So that doesn't work. But can you change yourself? Well, yes, with God's help, right? And so one big way that we can start a new mindset, that we can start changing ourselves for the better, is to think about some positive affirmations. You know, really think about what do you attract? What kind of people do you attract, right? Like John was saying, what you focus on, you get more of. So when think about, you know, what attracted your significant other to you? What are you attracting or who are you attracting um, I know that for myself, um, I have had to um, fight fear a lot during my life. I was afraid of certain things from a young child, and they kind of followed me into adulthood. And so I've been working on that 
for a long time. I know that it wasn't my fears that attracted John to me. Uh, Thankfully so. It was what is really inside of me. My courageousness, my outgoingness, that really attracted attracted him to me. It, it's So when I am acting as my true self, if that makes sense, mm-hmm. um, I can tell that John feels like I'm even more attractive to him. All right. So for those of you listening, um, when Jess is her true self, it absolutely is amazing and so attractive to me because of her wit because she is just, she's happy. She's happy-go-lucky. Uh, it, it's just, if you've ever experienced seeing your partner in life just be happy and being themselves, you know that this is an attractive thing. Because, you know, if you think of your spouse of, as being fearful, is that very attractive at all? I wouldn't say so. No. So when you are yourself, when you are happy and your your wit is there and you're you're funny and you know who doesn't like someone who's funny to make mm-hmm. them laugh, right? So why of course that's going to be attractive. Mm-hmm. So you know and I wanted to I wanted to just rewind a little bit and talk to to those about having the right mindset and I'm going to give you a few of these affirmations that you can start saying to yourself, because uh, you remember in the Bible, uh, when God is talking to Moses, and Moses is having a conversation and, and finally agrees to do whatever God, God was telling him to do. And he said, well, who should I say, say has sent me? And you know, if you remember, God's response was, tell him, I am sent me. And so this is a clue and a, and a hint from God himself to say, Look, you are whoever you say you are. You can have whatever you, your heart believes. And so when you can actually change who you are by telling yourself out loud who you are, and even you can do it by just thinking these thoughts as well, you can, you can change your outlook, you can change your future, and you can change your now. It's proven that you can do this in a matter of 72 hours if you're very, uh, very much into... How it all, you're just laser focused on it. That's the best way to put it. Um, so here are uh, eight statements, and you can write these down if you're in a safe place. If you're in a car, please wait and pull over or whatever, and uh, do it in a safe place. But here are the, here they are, and I will have them in the show notes on, on our blog. They are number one: I am happy. Number two: I am perfect. Number three: I am worthy. Number four. I am free. Number five, I am healthy. And number six, I am loved. Number seven, I am balanced. And I, this one really, the balanced one really had me perplexed when I heard it. And um, so this speaks to not being too extreme in one area or another. You are a balanced uh, individual. And you don't go overboard. That's pretty much what that's saying. And the last one, number eight, is I'm strong. I am strong. Now, if you can say these things to yourself repeatedly throughout the day, um, and I'll I'll put a stress mark on the beginning and the end of the day so that you're sleeping and, and realizing this is who you are, and then you start the day with this, you'll think on that throughout the day and you'll repeat it. You will see over the course of the first two to three weeks that your life will start changing. You'll start having different interactions with different people. You'll have um, happier interactions, and you're just going to see a a general happy uh, emotion just come over you. You are going to be that strong, free, healthy, loved, strong, and worthy, perfect, and happy individual. Is that attractive or not? Absolutely attractive. And the really cool thing is about the statements you just read, John, um, is that you can find references in the Word of God for each one that that outlines that this is the truth about us. Mm-hmm. This is how God sees us. This is the life He has for us. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's so awesome and so important to really put on the mind of Christ 
and see yourself as God himself sees you. We're made in his image, Mm -hmm. you know, for one thing. And so, but all of those statements are from the word of God. It's just so exciting. And so when you put those on like clothes Mm -hmm. in the spirit realm, when you're saying those about yourself, say it out loud so you can hear it because whatever you say and your ears hear, you believe. Yeah. There's something the fastest. Yeah. There's something about hearing your voice Mm -hmm. say it out loud Mm -hmm. that really your, your soul, your, your mind really grabs onto and says, Oh, this is what I'm supposed to believe. And it happens over a period of time. Um, and thankfully, because, you know, if God set it up so that it was like, okay, well, I am an eagle. And all of a sudden you turn into an eagle. What, what good would that be? Oops. You know, I am a mountain. <laughs> well, who would want to be a mountain? <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm being facetious right mm-hmm. now. But um, seriously, you, you can change who you are. You can change. If you think that you've gone down the wrong path, and you're, you're thinking, well, you know, I've, I've experienced n- no good things that have happened. You're one of those things that you, when you're one of those people that say, you know, nothing ever happens that's good. good. And, you know, you know you've kind of got that negative connotation of life. So you're going to want to start saying these, these positive affirmations to yourself because you will see this happen in the next two to three weeks, you'll start seeing that you're more positive. Things are going to start going your own way. Or maybe there's an area of your life that mm-hmm. you haven't seen a lot of good things in. Maybe not all your whole life, but maybe maybe an area of your life. Think of that and what affirmations would pertain to that in particular to start out with would be so important. Mm-hmm. And so these are just like eight of the basic things that you can start saying about yourself, about you know who I am. You can, I mean, I have these written down in my journal and I, I say them every day, even in my mind as I'm working or what I'm doing during the day. But I have a, a list of like two to three pages of I am statements that I go through every day. And eventually they become so ingrained in you that you start, you start being able to quote them, you know, like you would memorize lines if you're an actor or actress and uh, you'll just be able to recite them. Get and them in your heart. That's yeah. when they get into your heart, and that's when they start really taking hold. Yeah, that's so cool. And and that is a major way um, that we can, like John said, you can change how you are. And and I like to think of it as you're actually pulling your true self out in, to be visible. You're not hiding inside of yourself in fear. You're pulling yourself out to be visible to the world when you do that. And um, we were talking, we realized... When, when we are our true selves, right, when we're acting like our true selves, it either attracts our significant other to us even more, mm-hmm. and we're even better looking in their eyes, or if they can't handle our true selves, they will leave our lives. This is true. And so, so then, and it, that's not and so you don't even have to do anything. Right, and that, and because you're being your true self, if they're leaving and that's not what you want, we don't tell you this in, so that it gives you a fear. We tell you oh, this right. because we want you to be the very best that you can be. And, you know, your spouse or the person you're in a relationship with, you know, if, if they can't handle it, then you just approach them and say, hey, are you willing to make yourself better? and work with them. It doesn't mean they're going to leave your life forever, but it will mean that for temporary reasons, you're not going to be able to connect as well because you are bettering yourself. Um, and they're just, it's just like, you know, the best person for, uh, to play in the game is a person that's out on the court and not sitting in the stands or on the couch watching on the TV. So that's kind of how we're talking. We, we want to get that other person off the couch or out of the stands and on the floor and on the court with you to play in the game of, of life and your relationship. Yeah, and if, if they can't handle it at first, then you can be that good um, example to them. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and don't, you know, don't discourage them, but encourage them you know, to be their true selves as well. Um, but I guess with my statement, I was hoping that it would be the first way because if if they um, are a, a strong person to begin with, 
they should be able to handle you being your true self. Absolutely. Right? So it's a good test too. And never downplay who you really are mm-hmm. for fear of um, detracting right. your significant other. Because remember who we really are, that's you know what we should be attracting. Right. And so I said that because of my first <laughs> um, statement about when I'm acting as my true self, who I really am, it attracts John to me even more. He he sees me as even more attractive. Right. So um, next week, we're going to talk to you a little bit more about the same kind of a subject. It's going to be more along the lines of, you know, when do you call it quits? Because we realize you've been in relationship for a while and there's a lot there to think about. And uh, so that's next week. Um, but uh, in the meantime, if you have not downloaded our, our free ebook, we encourage you to go ahead and go over to the relationshiprevivalists.com forward slash seven secrets. Put your email address in there and download our ebook. It's, it's, a, it's a short read. It, if you're a, a quick reader, you could probably read it in about 15 to 30 minutes. And there are seven secrets in there that people usually don't think about in, in having an amazing, and relation, amazing relationship. So that is the uh, uh, end of our talk today. We are going to wrap it up. And we will talk to you in the next episode next week. See you later.